<laughs> we cut the U61 uh, in, a, in a kind of this quarter area, just okay. so you could see the insides of it and how it actually worked. Thought it'd be interesting for some of the um, a barista community out there to see exactly how these things operate, because there's a lot of confusion mm -hmm. over what this thing actually does. Okay. So, let's go through uh, a little bit about it. This is, let me make sure it's in the off position. So, this, um, what you don't see in the back here is the uh, two tubes that come in here that create the thermosiphon. Okay. And let's go through that first real quick. So, um, inside an E61, in this particular uh, one, we have a heat exchanger model, mm -hmm. which means there's uh, two boilers. It's a dual boiler, but one boiler is inside the other one, and it exchanges heat with the steam boiler in here to the brew boiler. Mm -hmm. That's why we call it a heat exchanger. Now, when that heat, ex uh, when the water inside the heat exchanger heats up, the water rises and it comes up through this tube, goes through this tube, out into this area, and then it loses its heat to the E61 group head. The water cools down and it goes back through this area, comes back through this tube, and enters through the bottom of the heat exchanger boiler. So essentially, when this thing's heating and cooling, it just continuously cycles water through this thing. It's very, very slow, but it still okay. cycles water through. And that's what keeps the group head hot, which is pretty important. Okay. Okay, so when um, when it's in the static position, here is the what we call the, uh, I'm going to call it the brew valve. When this is closed, no water goes to the coffee. And this is the exhaust valves down here. There's two of them. The main one is down here that releases pressure from the uh, puck or the coffee puck when the brewing process is done. So water will come uh, in through here, up through this small area on the top. Some people call this the mushroom. Mm -hmm. And there's a small uh, jiggler or flow restrictor jet that has a little 0.6 millimeter orifice and it allows water to come down through this area right to here. And so we have pressurized water up until here. Okay. Now, uh, when we put the E61 to the first position, I'll just hold this in place, we'll s notice two things. One, that these, uh, the exhaust valve will close, along with this exhaust valve, there's two of them, and the brew valve will open. And what that does is allow water to come through this area, fill up this chamber, then go up this path down here, and out into the coffee, which the portafilter would sit right here. And this is the little, uh, call it a diffuser. The water would hit here and go out these little holes, which would spread it out a little bit before it hits the screen. Okay. Now, so that is in the first position, on, uh, or what we call either low pressure or pre-infusion, where there would be uh, no pump turn on, but it would still have some pressure remaining in the brew boiler, which would force water through here and out into the coffee. Um, there, it would only be a little bit if it's uh, uh, not hooked up to the water mains. Okay. If it is hooked up to the water mains, then you have line pressure, whatever your water mains is, down through here and into the coffee. So is there any kind of like rough estimate on what that pressure might be um, in, a, in this closed circuit if it wasn't Yes. Yeah, so uh, this has an overpressure valve, which is probably around 9 bar for this particular machine. Mm -hmm. Some of the uh, other machines can be up to 12 bar. So you can have anywhere from zero to nine bar in this machine in this particular boiler. So depending on where the heat cycle is, um, it can have up to nine bar pressure. Okay. So if you happen to hit it at nine bar pressure, and you'd probably, uh, do you see brew pressure on this one? Um, that's steam pressure okay. only, yeah. So uh, you could have up to nine bar pressure, which would push some water through. Not a whole lot because it's... Uh, there's nothing pushing the water through, it's just some extra pressure forcing water through the coffee. Would my elevation affect that? Um, not in the um, in the brew boiler. In the steam boiler, yes, where there's a combination of water vapor and water, mm -hmm. but in the brew boiler it's it's uh, locked or it's completely full of water, so your okay. elevation won't necessarily change that. Okay. Um, water boils at a different temperature at elevation, yeah. and it could affect pressure slightly in here, but nothing significant. Okay. Um, so let's see. So now we can push this up to the second position, which would turn on the pump. 
and it really just opens this slightly more which has no real effect but it just turns on the pump and then now it forces water through this area into the coffee okay then when you're done brewing you come down to this second position I'm gonna hold this in place so it works properly comes down opens this valve a little bit first to relieve a little bit of pressure and then closes the brew valve and opens the exhaust valve and you get a little squirt of water out the end because that is releasing the pressure that's held within the portafilter here so that you can remove the portafilter immediately. So it's a mechanical method for the that brew pressure release. Correct. So okay. essentially this is a, a th mechanical three-way valve. We have one, one port that's the exit to the coffee, one port that's the intake of the water, and one port that's the exhaust. So intake, exhaust, and the coffee. Cool. All right, Brendan, do you have any questions about this? Um, is there any difference between the two exhaust valves? Like, you know, could they just have one in there? What, why is the design two kind of adjacent to one another? I don't know why they started this way, but it has something to do with uh, putting some extra hot water into this area before the exhaust because the more, the more you can uh, dilute that coffee that's coming out of here, the residual coffee coming out, the the less chance you're going to have to clog this area. Mm -hmm. I see. And then I notice with when the technicians here at Seattle Coffee Gear repair an E61, like just the standard tune-up, they repair both of these. I mean, they replace them entirely. Mm -hmm. And then one other valve somewhere. I don't, this it must one be, right here. Yeah. Now I see that there are these black gaskets mm -hmm. in here. Can you just replace those and then and then you know use the same old ones with? Or are those yeah, replaceable you, or not? I don't know. know if they actually sell those is the problem. Oh, so see. there's a little black rubber gasket on each one that fits up against these little um, machined in seals area. And although you could probably get these out, I don't know getting them getting new seals back in would be very easy. I see. It looks to me like they've they've rolled over the edge right here. Mm -hmm. So it'd make it a little bit difficult to uh, replace those. And why what what is that just from use? It's just wear and tear kind of yeah, stuff? Yeah, exactly. So um, essentially you uh, you need some elastomeric product to seal against this copper sealing surface. Okay. And typically uh, there's many compounds you can use. Not, there's no compound really yet discovered that can last forever in a coffee machine. Since it's up at temperature, this rubber component, depending on use and how long it's in contact here, will deteriorate over time. and Typically what you have is uh, the rubber hardening over time. And the harder it is, the more pressure it requires to seal on the surface. And as soon as it gets too hard, the spring can't seal the surface anymore and that causes mm -hmm. some leaks. So you're, so the kind of symptom for that this needed to be rebuilt would be you'd have excessive leaking? Exactly. You'd have just head. some leaks come, coming out of this exhaust port right here. Got it. If, if the exhaust valves are leaking, it would come out of here. Okay. And I guess if the intake valve was leaking, it would also come all the way down through here. Um, <clears throat> could uh, scale buildup also do that as well, right? If they if they weren't Correct. cleaning out, then it would. So typically, the the scale buildup is pretty hard to do right on the actual ceiling surface. It, mm -hmm. it kind of tends to go around that. I wish we had a, a damaged one. This one's pretty new. Um, scale buildup will happen around it, and eventually. Um, uh, go into the ring surface where it seals. And you, you, usually the scale buildup is not the problem, but it's a piece of scale that chips off and gets stuck on that surface so it doesn't seal all the way around properly. Okay. So that would be another leaking out mm -hmm. the exhaust down here? Correct. Um, and so this is a rocket E61 that we yes. use as the example, but this is the, the, this technology is just the E61 technologies regardless the, of manufacturer for the most part there there's little differences in uh in some of them but if somebody says in, says they're using the e61 group head mm -hmm. it's typically this setup right here okay all right any other questions b um maybe it would be helpful for, for people to see uh the path of back flushing Ah, you know, oh yeah, and, and where where it's going and what it's doing, right. what it's what it's addressing. Yeah. So when when you back flush, there's uh, a, the the ch the path for the water is water comes in through here, comes down through this seal, goes in the, up here, and down through here to the coffee, or the portafilter that has the coffee in it. 
So when you back when you when you turn the machine off, the extra coffee goes back up through here, boom, out the exhaust. So when you back flush, you pressurize with water, and then you release, and it back flushes, and the water goes out through here. You pressurize again, and water goes in through here, and then you turn the machine off, and then the water comes back through here and goes all the way out. So on, water goes this way. Off, water goes this way. Okay. See? And so back flushing, the sort of the um, that's the primary system that it's designed to address. Correct. So, <clears throat> and the reason for back flushing in this case is that so you when you turn the machine on, water goes out here. But when you turn the machine off, you have dirty coffee water coming back through here, filling up this area and going through here. This area is not so important. But when you turn the machine on, fresh water comes in this area and then goes back in through here. So. This particular area right right in here, this chamber and then these two um, pathways are important to keep clean because if there's dirty water in there that when you turn the machine on, dirty water is going to go into your coffee before the clean water does. So okay. you want to keep those particular areas clean. Cool. All right. Anything else, Brendan? I don't think so. I right. answered all my questions. Yeah. Great. Cool. Thank you so much, Bill. You're welcome. <laughs>